take a moment to look at the Belgic Confession of Faith. We are completing the 23rd article of that confession, which is on the righteousness of Christ, and we'll look at how that alone is the righteousness on which we rest. The article, the second half of the article reads as follows. Therefore, we always hold to this firm foundation. We give all the glory to God, humble ourselves before Him, and acknowledge ourselves to be what we are. We do not claim anything for ourselves or our merits, but rely and rest on the only obedience of Jesus Christ crucified. His obedience is ours when we believe in Him. This is sufficient to cover all our iniquities and to give us confidence in drawing near to God, freeing our conscience of fear, terror, and dread, so that we do not follow the example of our first father, Adam, who, trembling, tried to hide and covered himself with fig leaves. For indeed, if we had to appear before God, relying, be it ever so little, on ourselves or some other creature, woe be to us, we would be consumed. Therefore, everyone must say with David, O Lord, enter not into judgment with thy servant, for no man living is righteous before thee. Psalm 143, verse 2. When presented with the idea that we are saved based on the righteousness of Christ alone and not on any righteousness that we may present, not any merit that we might earn by our lives, uh, we are confronted with the fact that the gospel is a very humbling message. It takes away our pride, it takes away our self-confidence, and uh, calls us to abandon ourselves entirely and completely and cast ourselves completely on the mercies of God in Christ. And so the confession at this point reminds us that in the gospel, if we follow its message and hold that it is the righteousness of Christ alone that comes and stands for us, is that righteousness alone that can satisfy the justice of God. And it's only on the basis of that righteousness that we can have an entrance, in, an entrance into heaven. If we recognize that, then we come to the conclusion that our salvation is all by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And so the true gospel utterly humbles us, puts us into the dust. It calls us to abandon self and pride, to abandon any sense of merit, and to give all the glory to God for our salvation. God himself has, has acted for us, and he's accomplished the whole of our salvation. And so the message of the gospel is that we should give glory to God. Everything is from him, through him, and to him. To him be the glory forever and ever. So this is the great uh, driving theme of the gospel message. It's the, the message of the Reformation, the, the re message of the Reformed faith. Sola Dei Gloria. Only to God be glory. And we find that echoed here in this great confession by Guido de Bray. And so we humble ourselves before the God before God and acknowledge ourselves to be what we are. Here's the great humbling message of the gospel. We do not take any pride in ourselves or uh, puff ourselves up in thinking that we are worthy of some reward from God. But rather, we accept the testimony of Scripture about us to be true, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, that there's none righteous, no, not one, none who understands, none who seeks for God. They have all become corrupt. With this understanding of the gospel message, then we have the, the proper position whereby we can cry out for God's mercy and grace. We acknowledge ourselves to be what we are. We agree with God's estimation of ourselves. 
and do not flatter ourselves in our own minds. So this is the, the gospel message that points us to Jesus Christ and to his work. His righteousness is sufficient to cover all our iniquities and to give us confidence in drawing near to God. This is such a, a tremendous thought, having confidence to enter into the presence of God. Do you have that confidence when you approach God in worship on a Sunday morning? Do you have that confidence when you draw near to him in, in prayer? Do you enter into the throne of grace with great boldness, resting on Christ and what he has accomplished? Or are you consumed by doubts and fears and uh, a sense of guilt that overwhelms you? The confession reminds us that as we appreciate the work of Christ and how he's fully atoned for us and provided a perfect righteousness, we can now draw near to God with confidence. Confidence not in ourselves, but confidence in our mediator, Jesus Christ, and what he has done. And so we may draw near to God and make our petitions uh, before him. The great contrast is with the experience of Adam, who when he sinned against God, went to hide from God in the garden. And of course, Adam could not hide. There's no place where we can run from God. He tried to cover up his nakedness. There's nothing that could hide us from God. Everything that we think, say, and do is open before God. He sees us thoroughly and completely. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so if we rely on ourselves, if we rely on any other creature, and here is a reference to the saints, to the Virgin Mary, which are creatures, or to any other power, we are resting on that which cannot preserve us or save us. Our only remedy is to look to Jesus Christ. And so our prayer is uh, united with David's prayer long ago, O Lord, enter not into judgment with your servant, for no man living is righteous before thee. So we confess that we are sinners, utterly in need of God, but we confess that the righteousness of Christ is more than sufficient cover our sin and to bring us into the very presence of God that we might be blessed, that we might have fellowship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and rejoice in the great communion that is awaiting us in glory to come.